Moikka, and welcome to Imagine with me. Imagine a country far up in the north with more than six months snow a year. That's Finland, my home. It's not the easiest place for people to live in, but no worries. As professional educators, we are trained to teach children to live in these conditions. We know how to dress children properly for the winter, and we can teach them to ski, to ice skate, and to build snow castles. And if snow is something too cold for you to imagine, think about traffic. No matter where you live, there's probably lots of cars, planes and trains around you. And as professional educators, we buy toy cars for children to play with, we sing songs about trains, and when we go out with children, we teach them to cross road safely. And we can even advise them to choose bus instead of personal car for environmental reasons. Now, let's think about media culture, one of the most fascinating and pervasive elements of the 21st century. How we, as professional educators, are trained and competent to address this element of our lives. Very often, and sadly, the answer will be poorly. This thing hit me hard 15 years ago when I was studying to become a kindergarten teacher. I half accidentally attended a lecture in media education and started wondering how come we had almost nothing related to this topic in our education. The lecturer, he wanted us to imagine. Imagine a day of an average child. It could go like this. A child wakes up, dressed in pyjama, covered with Disney pictures. Then the child runs to the living room and asks for the parent a tablet computer to play with or opens the telly for watching cartoons. Afterwards, they go to have a breakfast. The radio is probably on and the parent will be reading newspapers. Then they go to the kindergarten and while they were there, they may have encountered hundreds of advertising on their journey. Once in kindergarten, the child starts comparing gaming results with friends or they start playing according to their favorite films. They may feel as beautiful, as bold and as fearsome as Princess Elsa is, or as fun and fast as Lightning McQueen. My own experiences from being a teacher student are 15 years old, but I've been conducting projects and trainings for early childhood media education ever since. And according to my personal experience, the problems and questions have remained the same. People might still be asking, why should we do this? There are still so much media in children's lives that we want to keep it out from kindergarten. Imagine if people would be saying that there is so much snow in Finland that we want to do only summer sports with children. The fact is that people know so little about media education that they don't even understand that they would need competencies for that. So what are the problems if professional educators are not competent to face the 21st century realities? There are several, but I'm going to address three of them. First, media Literacy, the outcome of media education, is 21st century civic competence. It is important for everyone, because if you don't master media, media will master you, and it doesn't ask whether you like it or not. Media literacy is much more than academic reading, writing and analyzing competence, because it's also very much connected to how you are connected to the world and to your loved ones. For example, making video calls and chatting with your family is very common habit of 21st century. Secondly, media literacy is more and more connected to one's personal well-being because there's so much media around us that it is getting more and more important to understand how to limit your media usage to the time and place where you can benefit from it. Media literacy is emerging literacy, like all literacies are. It's not something that you magically acquire. Media literacy 
evolves little by little and starting from very early years, we get best literacy results. In practice, in kindergarten, this can mean, for example, that we investigate pictures together with children, or we take our own pictures or our own video clips with children, or we can make our own newspaper and discuss ethics and facts and fiction uh, when watching films. Thirdly, and this is the most important for me, media education, in its core and essence, it is education. It is bringing up children to the world they have been born into. So let's not divide this world into two parts, into the world of adults and the world of children and their media culture that we don't even want to know. We have heartwarming examples how the practitioners have gained new energy and start flourishing and benefiting together with children once they have included the children's media cultural interests into their teaching. And this benefiting, that's a very important question, because as pedagogues, we need to ask why we are doing this. Media education is not just messing around with children and devices. No, it's, it's education, it's pedagogy, and that's very demanding in terms of pedagogical thinking. Because we have to ask ourselves questions like what are our goals? And not just learning goals, but what are we striving for? What is our conception of living a good life in 21st century? And this, of course, is very demanding. People are often worried about devices, but I wouldn't worry about so much about technical skills and knowing everything beforehand, because really, if the device is easy enough for three-year-old to use, it's definitely easy enough for adults to learn. To conclude, I think we need at least three things. We need good curriculum. Curriculum that is saying that we need to address media culture from versatile different perspectives, from cultural perspective, from social emotional perspective, from critical perspective, and from technical competencies perspective. And all these aspects need to be balanced. Recently, we have seen lots of talking about digital, and much of it has been accelerated by the industry. But not, let's not forget all the other aspects, because those aspects, those social and cultural aspects, are probably the ones that are meaningful for children in their everyday lives. Then we need good teacher education. We need teacher education that teaches to all pre-service and in-service teachers that media education and media literacy are important things not to be left out from your teaching. It is not something that is important tomorrow. It is not even a topic of today. This has been important for a long time. And thirdly, let's stop debating whether media is good or bad for children. We are not jammed in debating whether the world itself is good or bad for children, or whether snow is good or bad for children. No, as educators, we are all more or less practitioners. So let's just roll up our sleeves and start making the best out of media culture together with children. Thank you.